Hello everyone, I've got another Space Arcade game update. My previous milestone was getting a main menu working and having the ability to load in cycle levels. And here we have it, it's a main menu. So we've got a few options. The first is a campaign, a skirmish, then a mods, settings, exit. There's also a random planet that spawns down here in the bottom right corner and another one up here. So it's a little bit different each time you visit. If we click a button, our camera smoothly interpolates to a new direction. I'm using a sigmoid curve that starts out slow, speeds up, and then ends slower. So watch, it goes slow, fast, and then slow. And that's done using a sigmoid curve. If we click the campaign button, we're taken to a single player screen. Then the levels of the campaign are laid out in front of you. The gray levels are locked and the spinning colored planets are unlocked. The whole campaign is defined in a JSON file to make modding super easy to create new campaigns. If we mouse over a level, we get a hover widget. By clicking it, the selection stays and we can start playing the level. So if we click a level we haven't completed yet, we know we haven't completed it because the outgoing path is gray, we can start this and play the level. So this loads the level, and right now we're in, still have testing turned on, so all the debug lines and whatnot are here, but the actual game mode works. So if we destroy all the objectives on the carrier ships, I can now take down the carrier ships. And if we defeat all the carrier ships, we have completed this level. So we defeated the carriers, and now we are taking back to the main menu. And we have a new random planet generated down here in the corner. Now if we go back to the campaign screen, we can see that we should have unlocked a new level. So the path going out is now red, and we can go to this new big planet. So right now, what we played was a kind of demo level. Uh, the JSON that defines all the levels are ready, but I haven't sat down and actually designed the levels yet. So all of the progress that you make towards a campaign is persisted through something I call a save game config, which is essentially, it's just a JSON file. And it saves campaigns based on names. So if you're playing a mod, you could progress through different campaigns. Right now there's not any UI to select different campaigns, but all the code architecture is there. It should be trivial to add that feature. So let's go back to the main menu. I suppose you notice that the buttons construct and deconstruct between screens. I call this the laser UI. I wanted to make something different than what I've seen before. So every UI widget requests lasers from a pool of lasers to build their UI elements, which are these buttons in this case. And when they're done, so like if we click exit, all of the buttons here will be done. They return their lasers to the pool, which then interpolate off the screen using sigmoid curves. The text of the buttons is using the same tech as my previous video. If you recall, it's like a digital clock. So there's bars that turn on and off, just like a digital clock would do. And there's a bit vector that defines what is turned on and what's turned off in the digital clock font. So if you notice, it's kind of animating in a strange way. So I've built a subclass of the text display and called it glitch text. And the glitch text to animate will shift its bit vector into position causing a glitch-like pattern until it's in the correct position. So you can see that just happened on all of the words. Anyways, continuing, we've got a skirmish screen. What this lets you do is generate a randomly, uh, generate a random level that's configured with, within some parameters. So we can configure how many planets the random level has, how many local stars, like suns, we can configure how many carriers are per team. So this is like the spawner ships they have to take down. So you can you can configure how many fighters each carrier can own. So this one, this setting means they own 250 fighters, and that's how, the max that they can spawn. And it can go up to, to large numbers, but you need to be mindful if you put in a large number, you probably don't want a lot of carriers. And you can say what percentage of the fighters to spawn at the match start. So if we're at 2,500 and we spawn 50%, we're going to spawn 1,250 right from the start. They will all be there, and the ship won't have to worry about spawning those. Anyways, if we click Start, we'll be taken to the level, but let's explore some other menus.
If we click on the mods screen, you will see that that editor that I built so a while back is now hosted in this screen. So we can select which mod we want to play. We can change some developer settings. We can go into a dev menu, which lets us load specific levels, like stress test level, the basic test level. Um, and we can open up editors used for making mods. So this uh, model editor is where you would, if you added a new ship and wanted it to be in the game, you could configure it there. Projectiles is configuring projectiles, those kind of things. So by leaving this menu, it closes out the editor UI. I've also added a setting screen. So this is for like game settings and not developer settings. Though I did add one developer setting. So we have the ability to turn on and off the developer console here. Um, and I created a slider for things that need sliders like sensitivity and volume. Right now I don't have a lot of settings, but it should be pretty trivial to add them now. So all of this is saved to a settings profile, which is just another JSON file. The settings slider class was interesting to make. So for you vector math junkies out there, basically you create a vector from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and then I create a vector from this left-hand side to the mouse point, and this vector to the, where the mouse is is projected onto the vector of the slider, and we can determine what percentage the slider is at. Everything is done on a range of zero to one, so that it can be used like a percentage multiplier. By the way, all of this UI is custom built. The UI interaction works by creating a spatial hash grid that is dedicated to the UI system. And so when we move our mouse, we're actually casting a ray through that spatial hash grid looking for collisions. Each of the UI elements has a hidden collision bounding box that we use to test against the ray cast towards the mouse. The widgets can inherit from an interface that gives them events like on clicked, hovered, etc., which is how I'm changing the colors. So last, we have the exit screen, and it's pretty much like it sounds. You can exit the game or cancel it from here. So I think that concludes this update. There's a whole lot of work that I didn't talk about here. Um, it turns out that making a main menu system that transitions between levels is a non-trivial task. Anyways, until next time, thanks for watching.